All right. I am so excited to see Andrew roast people. Andrew, are you ready? Yeah, I'm so ready. Yes. I've been holding a grudge for a little bit. You know, I'm like, the, everybody's like, oh, you're so nice. You're so nice. Well, sometimes nice guys got to let loose a little bit. Are we going to see it? Uh, I mean, honestly, no. Just a little <laughs> bit. Just a little bit. Because ultimately, you know, I want people using PowerShell and it'll serve them well. And if you have code that works, I don't care if it's not perfect. But I will roast you for it because if I ever end up working with you, I do not want to read your crappy scripts. No offense. Um, it just makes uh, it hard. All of to the maintain. offense was taken. You looked right at my face and you, said, you I know, don't want to read your crappy you scripts. Did. He looked right at you. I saw that. But, Thank you. Yeah, we got some good scripts today. Good scripts to roast. Shout out to everybody in the community who shared some scripts. But uh, let's take a look at the first one. Oh, my goodness. Yep, yep. That's how you feel, too, if you're reading all this. This is a, a whole big old <sighs> wall of text. Um, this is from Mike Shonyo. Shonyo. This is Micah's father. Mm -hmm. So huh. those are two community legends, mm -hmm. Discord extraordinaires. But what's going on here? All right. I'm going to try and play good guy. You okay. roast, you roast, and okay. then I'll, I'll be the kind person. Okay, gosh, you put, come on. All right, all right, all right. Well, Mike, I love you. Um, so basically the script, it's trying to create an RDP file on someone's desktop. Now, my first thought is just copy a file, right? That, that would be one approach. It's a hot take. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's where my mind goes instantly. But apparently, according to Mike, uh, there's some limitations, I guess, with their AV or something like that, where that looks sketchy. And heuristically, they say no, um, no copying RDP files. So what he does instead that works is exactly, that's what it feels like whenever I look at this. It just slowly like takes you in. Um, but yeah, so you create this, this whole RDP file and then you add all these values um, using add content. Now that's a lot of calls to add content. I couldn't even count that many. That's, so, I mean, it, does your IDE dot have line numbers on the side? It does. It does. <laughs> this screenshot, I actually took this from my ID and I didn't include them, but it looks okay. like several all right it is several that is the definition of several and this is one of those times where they could do things more efficiently and maybe better i say maybe because you have to think someone else has to maintain this but what i would do is i would create an array with all these values and then use set content and call that one time um, and that would sort of make it a lot quicker yeah i the only thing that i'll add to this is like if you're new to powershell uh, like an array can look intimidating, especially as you iterate through it, if you're not familiar with what's happening. So with that previous script, at least it was readable. Yep. And if I had to go make a change, if I wasn't familiar with PowerShell, I could at least see where the thing was being set and where to go change it. Whereas if it was an array, I might have to do a little more thinking. Yes. And you might have to learn a new concept you're not used to. And you're yep. just trying to solve a problem and move on. And that script works completely fine. It will do yeah. exactly like, what you want. And the difference want. between like add content, send content, like you're probably a more efficient script, yeah. but for what it's doing, are you really going to notice the difference between 4.75 seconds and 4.8? Not at all. Probably nope. not. Nope. Those are just good practices to keep in mind. As you go through, maybe you are writing some things that are a little bit more intensive. Um, and I think another theme is like, you have to write things to the skill of your team. Yeah. Are you an org that uses PowerShell all over the place? You hire people who already know it kind of thing. You educate people, or are you the only one? Plugging away. Yeah. You start doing stuff at scale, it matters. I remember uh, early here at PDQ, we had a customer that had a million computer objects in their Active Directory environment. What? One million computer objects. Uh. Um, so I was like, okay, we can replicate this. I can, I can kind of <sighs> fake it. I can go put the computer objects there without having it. So I wrote a script to do it, um, not realizing that at that scale, things matter as the domain controller I was trying to write to yeah. was like, please stop it. And I actually mm -hmm. had to like slow it down intentionally to not break things. Yep. Rate limit sort of. Yeah. Okay. What's the next one? Next one we got Micah. Oh, Micah. Okay. The sun. And mm -hmm. Micah is a young product. Father here. and the sun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, what does this even do? All right. It, it reads from a CSV file and does some stuff in AD, changes some stuff, adds an email address. All right. First things first. These variable names are not great, buddy. Um, why would I want file reader to be all lowercase? Let's go for some camel case, my friend. File, capital R, eater. <laughs> Little consistent. A good principle in practice is if it's an internal variable, so say you have a function you're writing, right? Parameters should be capitalized variables. If it's inside your script, we start with a lowercase. And uh, give me the capital R, though. Make it easy. I'm a simple guy. All right. <laughs> Uh, uh, then, sorry, I'm just stuck on the, you done borked up. <laughs> like, I love it. 
Also, no comments. I, I am too a simple human. Please give me a comment. Right? Like, a little bit? Something. I mean, there's no lines. We're just going. We're yeah. just going, which is probably great for Mike. He knows exactly what it does. As you can see on line six, what is up? Okay, Micah just said in chat, like, <laughs> I steal the variables from a script that was not written by me. <laughs> okay. I mean, You're getting but they're variables. Meaner. You can I make like them this. different. Yeah. What's Ari? I know what array is, but what's an Ari of people who are difficult? All lowercase. I mean, what is going on here? Micah, I'm adding you to that variable, that array right there. <laughs> you, you belong in there with these variable names. <laughs> Tara, you look... You look Ari of people I'm enjoying who are this. Difficult. Keep going. Keep I mean, going. And then look at line 13. All right, Mike, you know, I heard you haven't listened to every episode of the PowerShell podcast. I can forgive you for that. But my dear friend, let me introduce you to VS Code so you can get linting. You see, null? Null should be on the left side of equality comparisons. It can lead to issues, my brother. You got to go to line 13. And fix this. Put null <laughs> equals variable. So yeah. obvious. So obvious. Yeah, I mean, I mean gosh. If you have geez. PS Script Analyzer and the PowerShell extension in VS Code, my friend, you're good to go. It's, but it's even worse. It? It's even worse because he says, I do use it. I just chose to ignore. So it's just, it's a willful ignorance. Even. My God. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, what's the next one? Yeah, I like this. Keep All right, going. Next. But Let's go. We got to do our next just, segment. Just delete so it and one. start over. This is next just delete and start over. This is Marcel. This is not too bad, all right? There's a little flow control change I'd make. If not process, I would probably do if process and then else, um, you know, kind of make it a little easier to read. The negative is kind of confusing. I will say on line four, we have progarm, progarm X. Again, with the typos. Not going to send you to jail for that. Cool. He speaks more languages than all of us. He does. So, you know, a little forgiveness there. Yeah, I have to yeah, roast, yeah, yeah. right, Marcel? You're you roasting something Marcel. Pretty good. Watch what out. am I going to do here, buddy? Ooh. Um, also, you, should, I, you can make a change with one character on line three. Put the exclamation point before the not. Oh, and so then, if not, not yes. process. That would work as well. Yeah. Yeah. If you want yeah. to get double it, negatives. It's, it's only one keyboard thing instead of having to delete all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only other criticism I'd have is maybe you want to do this differently. Like if you're using this in connect, you could make this a separate step and remove line five. And yeah. then the next step after that would be the one that actually installs it. That can be helpful. I'll be honest. It can be challenging for people who are newer to PowerShell to run EXEs with the switches and passing a whole bunch of parameters. Mm -hmm. So you can save yourself some easiness there and just use a command step. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. This is our good boy, Brock. He wrote us a book. All right. Um, <laughs> which is all right. It's well, not bad. We got some comments here he and there, but look, book. look at all those things that are minimized. I couldn't take a screenshot of this because we have a million paths and values and names, which you have to. So I can't, you know, fault him too much for that. Did he write this or did Chad GPT write this? I think it's him. I don't know. I, I believe it's him. Right. I reviewed it for him and I couldn't find too much. Um, but what I would say, I guess, is you could add some parameters to this and uh, like for the different registry keys so people can select what they want. Probably not necessary. That would be my my main feedback point, though. I like it when people have parameters because it makes your scripts a little bit more adaptable and easier for the next person to use. Assuming so, uh, they know how to since, use scripts. Since it's messing with H key current user, he could do something dangerous. What's that? Uh, <laughs> he could uh, run it as a user, but loop through the user hives for H key current user for each user on the system. Okay. Just be really careful. Yeah. Uh, so that you don't explode the user profile for everyone on that you box. You are terrifying. Terrifying. We'll just test it. Test it. Oh, oh, test environment. We got a ton of machines. Yeah. You seen the server room? We got that whole oh, thing for yeah. a reason. Yeah. Why test. not just That's go through all of them? Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. Thanks for watching this segment from PDQ Live. If you like this, you'll love the full show. Check it out every Thursday at 10 a.m. Mountain. Oh, and like and subscribe, please.